BMW has worked on their X7 and you have asked me, can they now catch up in the SUV segment to Bentley or even Rolls-Royce? Do they make them obsolete? We're going to find out here in Auto Crew with Thomas with the update BMW X7 here in Brooklyn Gray. What a setup. Look at that with the extended shallow line. Here you can see then the double kidney is in all black and look at that how large it is. Vertical fins right there and also in here in the M Sport the contrasting lower bumper. What I've done is here with the front setup they have split the daytime running light and the main headlamps. This has created a lot of discussions. Some love it, some hate it. Tell me in the comments which side are you on? Are you team love or team hate? But overall I think a very impressive setup. They wanted to make a bigger differentiation between the X7 and the X5 or X6 to put this one here even more upmarket. Yeah, maybe also to attack the top luxury brand. We're going to find out if that works or not. You wonder about the big microphone today? Well, there's a generator and some, you know, like waterfall stuff running in the background. So best sound quality for you. Length here at 5 meter 16 or 203 inches. That hasn't changed, but what has changed? The wheel size is starting now from 20 inch as base up to 23 inch now. Biggest one so far at BMW, and here these are 22 inch. Already very massive styling in this M style here. Also, see the bed right there. Wow, and then the M Sport also then has this contrasting side here. Overall, a very impressive look. And you can see this is also optimized for space, so especially for US customers. They're using this as a people carrier, basically, or for the family and stuff. Therefore, more upright windows that you really have also space on the inside. Technology wise, Optional here for the 40i or standard for the M60i is the rear exit steering and anti-tilt control. Gives you more sporty feeling, but at the same time, rear exit steering also somewhat fakes a shorter wheelbase when these rear wheels go in the opposite direction than the front wheels, also reducing the turning circle. Very interesting, by the way, that with this new electrification, mild hyper technology, when I'm easing the car here around and just rolling downhill, then the engine tends to shut off and you're rolling. The car is still somewhat active, but the engine is already shut off. It's so not a true hybrid feeling, but already some mild hybrid moments. Yes, an X7 looks bulkier in the rear than an X5, for example, because again, space also for the third seating row and so on and for the trunk. But here with this sculptural three-dimensional tail lamp design, really nice. It looks again a little bit more dynamic and this chrome strip here goes all the way across. I think this color here works very well for the vehicle, doesn't it? Look at that here in the lower part. <whistles> Auto Crew Fake Exhaust Police because, well, the outer one is just for beauty cosmetics. It works well design-wise. Yes, the real exhaust on the inside. So in this case, although it's not just about, you know, the real thing, I think it kind of works, doesn't it? What's your take on that? Overall, I think Considering this is also form for this function, it still was worked on very well design was. So what do you think? Do you like the design? Tell me in the comments. And more colors for you. This one here is sparkling copper gray. Very interesting. It has some kind of copper nuances when you look very closely. Also very cool color indeed. And this one here is frozen marina bay blue, the matte paint. This one looks really striking. I mean, in combination here with the black wheels in 22 inch, maybe a little bit too much, but I would love it for the example here, the matte blue with bright wheels. Oh, what's your take on that? But yeah, this is also one of the most, yeah, I mean, screaming out cars. It's not bright, but still like this has a big presence on the road. And this green color is called Verde Hermes. It is special, very unusual to see such a vehicle in that color. Would it be something for you? Tell me in the comments. This is the car key. It's actually light but good quality. And then you close the car here on top and open it like this with the key to entry and door closing sound. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, that's really nice. And then inside of the doors, also very good material use. This is also Sensitec leather red here, soft and real buttons here, everything very easy to control, Hofmeister King design uh, citation. Also big bottles fit in this side pocket right there. And now big news for the cockpit, you see here one curved integration of that 
well, one carrier, but then screens 12.3 on the left, 14.9 on the right. Soon more details to that if that's a good idea or not. Here is the M Sport steering wheel. I appreciate that we still have real buttons at the steering wheel, so that's straightforward to control. And then about the seats, look at that. This is also big news then for the X7, also available for the X5, by the way. These here are the so-called sensor fin seats. They're an evolution of sensor tech, so they're animal free, but super soft. Look at that, how plush they are. The surface itself feels really great, and they also have this pattern on it. So that looks really amazing. It's available here in black, or also in a bright styling. We had it earlier at a different vehicle. In the UK is also the, um, the standard to all of that, actually. Um, is it standard there? Well, you can get it in the UK at least. I checked the configurator. In the US, it's definitely standard and um, also great choice. Moving everything forward uses way more or less resource in the whole production process and it feels even better. So the X7 has never been that comfortable with this new seat here. This is really amazing. In Germany, it's not in the price list or the configurator, but you can just tell the dealer, I want these seats, and then they promise to get it. That's what they told me, at least. So, seating comfort is awesome indeed. By the way, the BMW 7 Series, there it is called Veganza, but it's basically the same material. They just used two different brand names for that because they're different suppliers. Here, the X7, X5, and so on, these big SUVs are being built here in the US, in Spartanburg. Whereas the BMW 7 Series is built in Dingolfing, so that's in Germany, and then they have a different supplier, but they have the same material quality for the non-animal materials. Really interesting. Here, headroom with 189 or 2 Still plenty of headroom left, although we have the panoramic roof, and we have this command driving position here. You feel like king of the road, but without, let's say, exaggerating it you know these top high-end luxury brands like you know Bentley or Rolls-Royce sometimes you have the feeling that they're going a little bit over the top some appreciate that but for me for example I like a more form of subtle luxury so not saying like everyone like oh look at that you know but more being a little bit functional and this is still somewhat the case here maybe not with the infotainment but we're soon going to talk more about that so, look at that there. The cockpit looks really clean and cool, I think. Nice wood integration right here, but of course, different styling deco elements are available. This look looks like modern textile here now. Here, this is the way you control the vents. And there, you can have some ambient lighting. Soon, I'm going to show you that. Rear knob still for the volume here in the lower part. Yeah, but then the thing is really with the screens. So, there is no separate climate unit available anymore. I did prefer this from the pre-phase lift. And here it stays always in that part. Yes, that is somewhat helpful at least, but to control it while driving, I mean, it's okay for such a solution, but it was easier before. That's one of the things I do criticize with this facelift here. And let's take a deeper look here into the software. And this to me is a symbol of over-engineering of the software clock two. I, it, it took me a while to figure it out. How long did it take you? It is 25 past 8. Yeah, that's the time, actually. And then it switches, you know, like in in these... What the... F fail? <laughs> yeah, about that. But, I mean, let's take a look at the rest of the software right here. It looks quite amazing, actually, from the visual part. However, I think it's just over blown so os8 is to me too functional in a way um, or it has too many functions i love the os7 uh, especially when i want to here i want to have like the consumption figure right here and then i have to go here vehicle apps and then to live vehicle and then content and then trip data and <laughs> okay i'm asleep so yeah that just takes too much time. I don't get it. Yeah. However, the car internal GPS is still one you can use. Oh, it's a Frank Sinatra drive. Oh, I heard President Obama was also in this hotel here recently. So then let's zoom out. Here we're in Palm Springs. So that's actually pretty cool. Very well usable. The CarPlay integration. And that is very well to use. Definitely interesting thing. Definitely. Um, let's see about the sound system. This is the Harman Kardon sound system. And 
this gives you a really nice true in-depth sound so yeah i love that wow that's cool so i really like to drive the vehicle and listen to music and at least the volume i can still turn down and also on the steering wheel i can also um put the music up and down and yeah i love the i love clicking sounds in the vehicle right because they somehow present a user interface so you get along with the infotainment system, it's fast enough, but it's more complicated than before. But what about the instruments? Then here, the digital instruments, let's put that engine alive, here we go. And then you have left side the speed and right side the RPM. And you can also adjust the things here, for example, the content, what you want to see here. Maybe also some GPS content and so on, or from the car internal map. And then here, this then the layout. You can also change that depending on what you prefer. Here I also prefer the pre facelift layout, but yeah, you get along with this easily, so it's not it's not an issue or something. So what we can see here is the head-up display. Hey, Michelle, don't, don't steal my microphone. So I'm sorry. That's my part. What you can see here is the head-up display. <laughs> Very nice to see. I also put it here to full brightness at the moment. And here a closer look at the ambient lighting. I'm also switching the colors through. Of course, you can even better see that at night. And I also don't dim it at night, that it looks really still kick-ass, yo. <laughs> so, of course, Thomas Blue would be for me, right? So, um, not this one, but definitely Indigo. By the way, what I can't show you here at the moment, because I would need a web connection here for the smartphone, I don't have that here at the moment. You can have the Apple Maps, actually, also in the Instruments cluster with the Apple CarPlay. Google Maps, you can also have there, but only with the Android Auto. But at least you have then one solution each. That's also a helpful thing to have, that definitely. And what I also find cool with this car, you have separate buttons for things, like a separate button at the inside of the door for the rear shades. And I can easily activate or deactivate the rear shades without going deeper into another menu. Just one button here at the inside of the door, and that's it. And, you know, I can control my seat, my own seat, of course, from here, but I can also switch here at the inside of the doors for this so-called gentleman function, and then I can also control the, <laughs> the other seat <laughs> on the other side. So, um, you know, when someone gets in the vehicle and says, like, ah, I don't know, um, this is also a cool camera slider in here in this case, right? Goodbye, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the most expensive camera slider. Yeah, the camera slider, yeah, these seats are very expensive. So I think it's a cool function that when someone doesn't know, they kind of like, oh, I don't know how to adjust the seat. Like, wait a minute, baby, I can show you how to adjust the seat. Lower middle console here, you can slide this one open. Then adaptive cup holders, they are also very well built. Here still USB A charger. This one is inductive charging here. It does not have this new function that the air sucked away yet. So um, the thing is with the inductive charging, it tends to overheat indeed. So I would probably rather use than the cable charging solution. And then this is also new with the facelift. You don't have the real shifting lever anymore. Pro is, it's a more integrated solution, it's cleaner and, you know, have more space in a way, visually, but I do prefer the real shifting stick over this one. This looks just digital to me. When I'm in a BMW, I want to have, like, thing to really touch and feel, you know. Um, this is still, of course, a real deal, but the big one, to me, was cooler. Here you select the driving modes and start stop engine and it is also equipped always with adaptive air suspension and you can also see it right here because you can also change the level of the air suspension but it also does that automatically for example when you drive really fast or in sports mode then it also goes a little bit lower and then we have the split opening here for the armrest there we go with usb c charging rear seating is super interesting indeed so you can still hear uh, electronically control the seats but you can still touch these buttons Michelle can show that on your side so what I'm doing here on on my side now these buttons here and unlike in the all new 7 series where everything is digitalized and you have to slide the seats and control them like with screens in the rear this is so easy because a straightforward solution and here that way for example when I move the seat to this position I could still sit here and then we'll see how much space there will be in the third seating row but if I have the seat here all the way back on that side here you can see this is the maximum leg room we get of course it's a long vehicle it's not the best usage of space overall but still plenty of space of course for tall adults 
for me one meter 89 or six foot two and headroom here also still works even though this is the one with the panoramic roof of course from the rear seats gives you a great view and it's, wow it's so comfortable in the, in the rear here so this is to me also one of the most comfortable cars in the rear here overall you can also adjust the back part here in the angle here in the front we have mounts for ipad holders and i think this is also somewhat a better solution than external rear seat entertainment and so because when you just put some holders in here and use your own ipad i think it might be the best solution overall isn't it also the sensor fin material here in the back it is so soft and high class and, and quality so even if just quality and feeling plays a role i would always go for this one here it's really the most superb i've seen in the automotive industry yet here this part you can also move down for cup holders then and they also secure the bottles quite well and some more space right here and now it will be very interesting what we can score in the third seating row but just a quick remark here in the front usb-c channels two more and then you also have a separate climate unit this one here when the engine is running and still works with real buttons but once again the seating comfort here in the rear is really top notch here for the second seating row and now this button here is to fold the rear part only and the button below that is for the entry function and then the front seats moves a little bit forward therefore it takes a few seconds first and then this one goes forward and up and this is also a very easy solution then for an entry remember the alternative to this bench all the way through would be captain's seats in the second seating row these are also available then you have two individual seats here in the second seating row and you can maybe move through the middle it's quite tight though um, so this is maybe the better solution but then the question is do you want like two 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 setup or two three two setup and this one here with the through bench has the big advantage that you can fold all the things all the way flat i'll soon show you that from the trunk the captain seats are a little bit more exclusive yeah but maybe this one is giving you more possibilities and here the interesting thing is when i move this seat here forward as i could still sit there then i could also somewhat closely fit into the uh, third seating row here so it is somewhat proof indeed for seven tall adults also headroom is closely but directly working and you can see here isofix also for the rear seats so you could also install some child seats here good that they thought of that actually so indeed this is probably by this by this solution here the best luxury suv people mover also and even um you know easy of course when you're not that tall or maybe you have children who don't need like extensive child seat but are already not that tall it may be something in between this is like a good use then for the third seating row and you also have some luxury amenities here in the back um, cup holders for example or also a separate climate unit even seat heating for the third seating row uh, yeah but i think you gotta check the options list for that let's check out the trunk or the boot it's a split gate here and this allows us a cool picnic function for example you can sit down in here and have a chat with whoever you desire <laughs> it's 750 up to 2120 liters is the capacity of course a little bit less if you use the last seating row but step by step this is like you know a small cover you can also just remove that the width here you see here is a little bit more than a meter of 40 inches so that's really cool and the total height here is a little bit more than 80 centimeters or 32 inches so very very usable here you can see easy storing of the things and then you can slide them out so for packing things it's actually quite nice to have this additional space here yeah this is <laughs> how you can see how you can remove that thing as well and then underneath look at that there we go so underneath we have here a storage of that bigger cover and some more space and this is at the moment here the setup here with the second seating row and there are different buttons here for example um, max luggage and with the max luggage button um, it only works when the car is properly powered let's see there we go yeah has enough power yet so then this one also falls flat there we go takes a while but looks definitely really amazing and you can see here this is then the third seating row it's all the way all the way flat that is actually pretty cool and then you can 
have individual settings here or then max people button and this one then moves everything up so a very convenient solution and there again we have the third seating row this one you just put it up manual then you still have some space here left behind the seats but overall very well usable hardly we see a top-end luxury car that is so well usable indeed the best engine that bmw has to offer is the 3 liter inline six cylinder turbo petrol engine look at that here 380 horsepower and 5.8 seconds in the acceleration figure if you want to go a second quicker you could also take the eight cylinder 4.4 liter eight cylinder that is then the m60 however this one here will be more fuel saving than the eight cylinder that's for sure and it is definitely enough for this vehicle in europe you can also still get the three liter diesel Welcome to Thomas's Luxury Driving Lounge with the BMW X7. Here today the 40i, the six-cylinder, and to me the right engine for this vehicle is the most efficient one. You can go like 10 liters or more kilometers, 23 mbg US, 28 mbg UK easily, that's possible. Sometimes even better, cruise control straight, not too fast. Here a little bit worse at the moment because we're going uphill, uphill, uphill. Uh, but they have made this engine a little bit more efficient also worked a little bit some tweaks here and there also mild hybrid integration so going forward also in this case the eight cylinder will have more punch however so like a second quicker in the acceleration figure however it will also use like you know like five mpg worth or like two two and a half three liters um, more per one kilometer so um not sure if you want to really have that yes you have a little bit better sound low it's like low frequency growling but again you know to be more efficient saving some fuel then of course the six cylinder here is way to go and here we can also show you some acceleration i'll just do it from a standstill right here i'll put it to the sports mode there's one button for that also go to the s shifting sports mode and go from zero to miles let's go Up 55 miles and that's a quick acceleration and that was a nice sound from the six cylinder yes the v8 would be more growling low, low frequency that is fun however here the six cylinder is lighter on the front axle that's of course also an advantage and you've seen an acceleration more than enough power and that's also the cool thing about the x7 it is a large suv but still it doesn't feel too different from driving in the x5 or x6 Yes, they feel a little bit sportier but since you also have it's an option or standard with the m60 v8 that rear axle steering especially at lower speeds this suv feels so agile and also has a narrow turning circle because of that really good job and also this anti-roll control although we sit upright on the road we have a great panoramic view to the front when we are passing through some great landscape roads like here it is amazing still it doesn't shake up at all in the sports mode the adaptive suspension also makes it a little bit stiffer have more contact to the road i have a good steering feeling so i always wonder about that is it from you guys in the u.s plan in spartanburg that you somehow have a better feeling for that because i've been criticizing bmw 3 series especially and some of the new beam all new bmw models for losing the steering feel because they have this new philosophy of making the steering wheel light so it's supposed to make the car more agile in the feeling yeah i can understand how they mean that but i don't think so for me a bmw has to have a natural steering feeling and believe it or not their suvs have the best steering feeling in the lineup it's supposed to be the three series but, it's, but it isn't, you know? BMW X5 and X7 have probably the best steering in the BMW lineup nowadays. And yeah, that's really astonishing, but it's just the case. And they have very good steering control feeling over that. So although I'm driving, let's say, the most bulky BMW there is in their lineup, I'm having so much fun here up the road. Of course, you're overtaking this Lincoln Aviator here. It's also one of the competitors. 
Yeah, and literally it does overtake this one because we have such a great interior build quality. We've seen that earlier. Also, the nice new sensor fin seats. I also activate the seat cooling here at the moment because it's already quite hot outside here, outside of Palm Springs, outside Palm Desert. What a beautiful area! You always love to be back here, and of course, also Joshua Tree National Park. This is yeah, one of my favorite places. Just been there again there yesterday. Oh, we're catching up to an X5. Wow, it's such a great race up the hill, almost like uh, going up Pikes Peak. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yes, in a 5 Series sedan, this road would be even more fun. But considering the size, it's still a lot of fun. And we can also go back just to the normal comfort mode. And you can easily go up that here. S shifting mode turns up the RPMs higher. That's why you also hear a little bit more of the RPM. Um, but here in the D mode, it's also just fine. You can relax then a little bit more. Yeah. But also when we are in the somewhat softer steering here. I don't have too much, you know, like sports mode, more resistance in the comfort mode, not so much resistance in the steering, but still feels natural. And also suspension wise, it's fine. You can stay in a normal mode. But I think, especially here that you reduce some G-forces on the body of driver and co-driver, I think it makes sense to go in sport mode when we're going up these winding corners here. And to me, that's the essence here also of a BMW product that no matter which segment it is in, it does deliver a sporty driving feeling. And they do achieve that also with the X7 here. That's the cool thing. To me, indeed, the six cylinder, especially in the corners, feels a little bit lighter. So when you're more running straight, I mean, you like you're at the big intersection and then you start using the V8, hit the throttle, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's something appealing to our bodies, definitely, especially when you're a car enthusiast. But here for winding corners, I think the six liter with a uh, less weight does appeal a little bit more. And yeah, as I said earlier in running straight, cruise control, highway use, it's also giving you some uh, decent mileage considering uh, this, this size of an SUV, definitely. As for the roundabout visibility, it is, you know, this in this built upright style from the windows, this greenhouse we have around, and therefore the roundabout visibility is quite nice actually. And let's say, oh, like sunshades, yeah, it's efficient to block out some sun, but I want to have more visibility. One press of a button and these blinds go down. So I like the direct user interface. The only thing I indeed have to swallow is that separate climate control. I like to have that um, down there. There is one possibility for you. If you say you don't need the space of the X7, um, you're like fascinated by the vehicle, but the X5 is more or less the same besides the third seating row. Um, yes, the different siding on the exterior. Oh, sorry. Yeah, BMW surely doesn't want to hear, hear me saying that. It's more or less the same. Yes, they want to be the X7 more upmarket now, and they do easily achieve a Rolls Royce or Bentley. They surpass them with that, especially also in the driving part, you know. So it just feels so much better, and this is already an expensive vehicle, but you don't need to pay more money to get a better vehicle. You do not get that then, you know. So this is, to me, probably the best luxury SUV on the market here at the moment. And when there are some others out there which are more expensive, it's not really worth it, actually. And yeah, talking about the X5 there in front of us. So if you want a little bit more agile, you don't need the third seating row. You can easily go for an X5. And the sofa version still has the manual climate unit, but already gets here the new sensor sim fin seats I'm sitting on. So this could be a good compromise. And if you haven't subscribed yet, Please subscribe right now because soon we will also give you an update on the BMW X5 facelift and see, I guess, they will also put these screens in there and then we'll also lose the uh, temperature diets as for that. So we already reached the top here now. I'm going back to the comfort mode. I can also set in here the uh, cruise control, for example. There are different modes to activate, for example, the assisted driving um, or the distance control. So depending on if you just want to have the car um, to reduce the, the distance of the car in front of you, or then this is the driving mode. Motorway, it's the main use case for that here on these winding roads. You see here, yeah, you don't want to trust in it 100%. That's just too fast. It's also not what the system is laid out to. It's more meant for the motorway. And on the motorway, it's working very, very well. We also have blind spot monitor in the side mirrors. 
so all the assistant systems are not too um, intrusive so they let you drive the car still but if you activate them they work quite flawlessly just not when we have too many winding roads but that's the cool thing about this driving party today that we can show you these beautiful winding roads here and the agile character of this vehicle which is still present at the same time it's just a good cruiser when it's going straight you can enjoy hours and hours and hours going on a road trip go see some national parks and um, you always stay fit and activated put the seat uh, cooling a little bit higher to stay cool in these seats here still um, enjoying the plush comfort that all works very very well so I'm still quite excited about driving this one and there is another video of the X7 if you want to see different colors Blue Ridge Mountain and the uh, uh, deep frozen gray also comparing the eight cylinder or if you want to go with one of the competitors tune in here